supernovae, the harbingers of life and death. The night sky is a beautiful sight, a carpet of pitch black nothingness furnished with bright shining stars and swirls of cosmic gas and dust. To us mere mortals, this is how it will always be, as from the perspective of an earthling's naked eye, nothing much seems to happen up there. Sure, you'll see the stars appear to move across the sky as the Earth rotates, and maybe you'll be lucky to spot a comet or two in your lifetime. But without a telescope or a rocket ship, that's the most exciting thing you'll ever see up there, right? Well, perhaps not. For it turns out our corner of the universe is long overdue a spectacular event so bright it would outshine the stars themselves. And this is no mere light show either for we are talking about the death of a star, a supernova, an event of such power and importance it may decide the fate of living beings on worlds many light years away. So let's find out when you might get to see one of these incredible objects and what the potential consequences may be as we explore supernovae, the harbingers of life and death. <laughs> Or just another pawn used to further propagate what Imagine looking up to the sky and seeing an object bright enough to stand out among the stars. What have you witnessed? Is it a new star being born? Well, you're exactly right, in opposite land. What you've actually seen is the death of a star, and if the event is powerful enough, you may have also witnessed the genesis or destruction of life in another world. When a star dies, it doesn't just go out with a whimper like your pathetic old dog Patches. A star expires much like a cat would, in the most dramatic way possible, as its core becomes so heavy it implodes under its own gravitational force, with the result being a massive explosion called a supernova, that can be witnessed across the galaxy. Okay, so maybe that's not how cats die, but, but wouldn't it be cool if it was? Stars can also enjoy an explodey death rather than an implosion-based demise if they are part of a binary star system where one star leaches material from the other until it accumulates too much and explodes like an overfed fat child. Either way, the resulting supernova forms one of the most powerful explosions in the universe. And precisely how powerful these events can be is illustrated by Gamma Ray Burst 160625b. When a star goes supernova, they emit electromagnetic radiation in the form of gamma rays, X-rays, and super-hot Ray Romanos. GRB 160625b was detected in 2016 by NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, and its rays came from an event within the Delphinus constellation, 9 billion light years away. According to University of Bath professor Carol Mundo, it was so bright it could be seen on Earth using nothing more than a set of binoculars. It is believed this event was produced by a gargantuan black hole which itself was the result of the death of a star many times larger than our sun. Eleonora Troja of Maryland University was quoted as saying, In a matter of seconds, the process can emit as much energy as a star the size of our sun would in its entire lifetime. In fact, so powerful was GRB 160625b, some astronomers have dubbed it the second largest explosion known to have occurred in the universe. The first was a rather insignificant cosmic soiree known as the Big Bang. Thankfully, these events are rare in the near universe. Astronomers have detected over 10,000 supernovae as having taken place in other galaxies, but the last time one was directly observed in our own was Milky Way back in 1604. Did you see what I did there? Known as Kepler's supernova for its most ardent student, Johannes Kepler. This star death took place 20,000 light years away in the constellation Ophiuchus. At its peak, its emissions were brighter than any other star, and records exist of Chinese, Korean, Arabic, and European observers noting the event. Such was its prominence within the sky. In the 400 years since, we have yet to witness another supernova taking place within our Milky Way. 
We have seen one blow up inside our near neighbor, the Large Magellanic Cloud, way back in 1987. But everyone knows that what your neighbors get up to doesn't really count. That'd be like saying I have a hot wife just because my neighbor has one. I mean, sure, she keeps giving me the eye, but <laughs> she isn't mine. Yet. However, just like the eventual glorious union between myself and sweet Cynthia next door, the observance of a local supernova is both certain and long overdue. Estimates state that a galaxy the size of ours will bear witness to a supernova once every 50 years, with one star dying every second in the universe at large. Scientists are currently observing a number of stars with the potential to go supernova within the next few decades, and the prime candidate in our own galaxy is believed to be KIC 9832227, which is a binary system whose merging could form a luminous red nova sometime in 2022. According to a 2013 study from Ohio University, we have a 100% chance of viewing a Milky Way-based supernova's infrared radiation through telescopes within the next 50 years. This contrasts with just a 20% chance of us being able to view one of these events via the naked eye. But before we go crossing our fingers in hopes of witnessing a cosmic explosion, perhaps we should be careful what we wish for. Like my charm, supernovae can be deadly if experienced up close, with their radiation capable of obliterating life before it's even begun. They're a little bit like those red hand sanitizers which claim to destroy 99.99% of bacteria, with the rays from distant supernovae able to sterilize a planet light years away. To a lesser extent, this is something which may have happened on Earth several million years ago according to a paper by astrophysicist Dr. Brian C. Thomas. Towards the end of the Pliocene and the beginning of the Pleistocene two and a half million years ago, Earth was undergoing a transition from a hot and balmy planet to one subjected to repeated ice ages. This change is believed to have occurred due to natural variations in the orbit of the Earth, but what has not been definitely explained is the sudden diversification of life witnessed during this era. According to fossil records, no mass extinctions took place, but there was a higher than normal rate of species becoming all gross and dead, with notable changes in vegetation and speciation also reported as occurring at this time. Dr. Thomas believes the cause may have been two supernovae, which went off 2.5 million and 8 million years ago. The most recent took place relatively close to Earth, between 163 and 326 light years away, and its radiation likely stripped away some of our ozone layer, leaving certain organisms exposed. Interestingly, Dr. Thomas suggests that while some animals and plants may have been negatively affected by the supernova's effects, a gradual decrease in ozone may have actually facilitated the emergence and success of several new species. The ozone layer acts as a barrier which prevents ultraviolet radiation from altering the genetic makeup of biological organisms. Bothering your genes in this way can result in cancer, but it can also lead to genetic mutations, some of which may be beneficial. Dr. Thomas notes that some plant life, such as soybeans and wheat, seem to thrive during the period of reduced ozone. So, if you're a stereotypical millennial gulping down on a soy latte and munching on avocado toast, you can thank a supernova for bringing you today's lunch. Dr. Thomas estimates that for life to be fully extinguished on Earth by a supernova, it would have to occur within 50 to 100 light years of our planet. But as we've just discovered, a more distant supernova may actually be beneficial to some life forms. And one Danish physicist believes exploding stars could have been the driving force which enabled life on Earth to thrive. Professor Henvik Svensmark is the owner of the most Scandinavian name ever known, and he suggests the solar system's historical journey through the Milky Way may have brought it into contact with several supernovae during its lifetime. Professor Svensmark trolled through 500 million years of geological and astronomical data and noticed that when our solar system passed through the Milky Way's spiral arms, we would have encountered newly formed clusters of stars. Many of these stars would have been large enough to go supernova, and after analyzing the rate at which they did, Professor Svensmark spotted a correlation between star explosions and altered geological conditions here on Earth. 
It seems that the variety of life present on Earth was the most broad when nearby supernovae were frequent. The professor believes that since high levels of supernovae would have given Earth a cooler climate, this in turn would have created a wider variety of habitats between polar and equatorial regions, removing many organisms from their comfort zones and forcing them to adapt. To put it simply, the effects of a supernova give evolution a huge kick in the pants, with life forms made to mutate, adapt, or die. So, I suppose you could say that just like my charm, supernovae play an important role in the creation of life throughout the cosmos. For yes, I am an intergalactic harlot. Deal with it. This discovery makes supernovae even more crucial to the existence of life than we previously thought. Supernovae are already known to be responsible for the formation of the elements found in our planet and inside our bodies. As Carl Sagan famously said, the nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, the carbon in our apple pies, were made in the interiors of collapsing stars. We are made of star stuff. But now it seems our interaction with dying stars does not begin and end with their creation of the elements. Ancient supernovae may be responsible for providing the building blocks of life, but recent supernovae took care of it once it was born. And what's more is that modern supernovae may continue to perform this role, as research suggests our present climate here on Earth may be affected by supernova activity. So, how does this work? And what happens if a large enough supernova were to hit Earth tomorrow? We're going to explore this idea further in our bonus video, Cosmic Ray Climate Change, which you can watch over at patreon.com slash strange mysteries now. For a $2 monthly pledge, you'll gain access to over a hundred bonus videos. Just watch this. You believe. What do you believe in? You believe in your beliefs, otherwise, why would you believe them? You are free to believe whatever you want, just like you are free to think whatever you want. Free will is what allows you to be you. The beauty of free will is that it allows you to believe in free will. And nothing can ever take that away from you. As humans, we are the pinnacle of life on Earth, the species at the top of the food chain. It is even us who controls the fate of the Earth. And it is we who are the puppeteers manipulating the strings of reality so as to coerce it into whatever we so choose. If you believe that, but what if I were to tell you that there is a form of life, an entity, if you will, that is greater than us? An entity that controls us simply by giving us the illusion that we are the ones in control. What if I were to tell you that every facet of your life, including your destiny, has already been predetermined and that you, no matter how hard you try, cannot and will not ever be able to change that. Would it be uncomfortable for you to accept that you play no role and have no choice in choosing your own destiny, beliefs, opinions, feelings, actions, or thoughts at all? But that instead, you are just another pawn used to further propagate whatever the true and ultimately mysterious purpose of whatever these beautiful, selfish, lifelike entities wish to achieve. It's only uncomfortable if you believe it to be true. And isn't it only uncomfortable if you choose to believe it's uncomfortable anyway? So which is it? Either your predetermined fate is to safely remain in the dark where you can bathe in blissful ignorance, or you can choose to indulge your curiosity not knowing what the outcome will be, even if it causes you to lose touch with that one very precious idea we all fight to be sure of, no matter how detrimental that fight may be to us. 
No matter how much pain we must endure because of it. And no matter how many lives may be sacrificed because of it. Including at times our own. The same idea, whoever they are, whisper in our ears so much that we forget that it is they who are the architects of it, of this illusion. Reality. Join our $20 premium video tier on patreon.com slash strange mysteries and watch our latest premium video, The Nature of Itself. But only if you choose to.